Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR, so let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So, uh, currently at the moment in time that I'm recording this, you know, markets are uh, pretty much stable, have not changed much. I know HBAR hasn't really kind of been moving too much in price either. Uh, you guys know the, you know, story. It's basically like every single day is almost like the same thing here like six to seven cents is basically the area that we are watching on you know h bar for one of them to break uh honestly i would say like eight cents if we can get back over eight cents on h bar that would be you know something to kind of cheer for um, but at the current moment in time we're just kind of stuck in this boar fest and the same goes for like even the rest of the market like bitcoin could run up to like 28k for an example um, but it will still be in a downtrend. So we're just kind of waiting for stability. We're waiting for the, you know, bear market bottom, if you will, to formulate. And uh, until then, you know, things are just kind of, it's going to be like a slow sideways trading, uh, you know, momentum. But I will say today, um, when this does go live, I don't know what time this uh, video is going to go live. It might be around like noon. Uh, but today, basically, the FOMC meeting does happen. We do see the rates come out from, uh, you know, the Fed. Uh, two key things to watch for is anything under 75 and anything over 75. Those two definitely impact the market drastically. In the short term, we might go uh, bullish and we might have a run up on Bitcoin to like 25K plus. Who knows exactly what will happen, but uh, that is what I currently am watching for. Now on Twitter earlier from yesterday, I did tweet out saying, do you think, you know, Hedera is the next generation of crypto technology? No, maybe yes. And I actually want to hear from you guys. Do you think that Hedera is uh, the next generation of crypto tech? Because to me, I think that when we really kind of look at things happening around Hedera uh, with all the developments, all the announcements, all of the updates, I truly do believe that Hedera is going to, you know, really give this market a run for its money. And I, I, I really do think going forward, um, what we should really kind of pay attention to, and I've said it time and time again, is the retail use cases and the retail ecosystem being built out on Hedera. And uh, we actually have quite a significant update um, actually from Hedera's side around that very well, you know, thing. So let's dive in let's talk about that and uh, it starts with this announcement here so this is from alex russman this is the head of the metaverse fund at the hbar foundation like i said that money is being well spent the emerging tech forming that or the forming the metaverse is built on hedera avatars and fan engagement are being revolutionized by hyperreal studio and freeverse io finally we can announce hedera as the as their dlt layer and do you see this quote here finally we can announce hedera as their, their dlt layer Remember what I said, this goes back even like a year or two ago now. We're not, uh, you know, two years ago. It's basically been like about a year and a few months. Um, I said that Hedera has so many NDAs under their belt. They cannot talk specifically about a few things, but this is the one that I am very excited about. And we're going to be talking about it right now. So first off, we do see them announcing it, you know, a gamified, you know, metaverse toll leveraging the Hedera network to enable a list entertainment talent to engage with their fans. Uh, we do see down here, hyper real, you know, our industry leaders in the realm of Hollywood blockbusters and triple A games, uh, the supervising team behind groundbreaking animation for, you know, titles, including the Lord of the Rings, the two towers, uh, the matrix reloaded pirates of the Caribbean, call of duty, and much more leveraging Freeverse uh, IO's dynamic NFT 2.0 technology on the HTS Hyperdream will enable artists, musicians, celebrities, and brands to use their digital assets, including Hyperreal's digital human, you know, doubles known as hypermodels to connect with fans in the metaverse. Examples of hypermodels include digital twins for Paul McCartney's, you know, music video from uh, or uh, Find My Way, sorry, and the Notorious Big's video, The Brook Metaverse, is coming featuring the Notorious Big. Uh, the Freeverse NFT 2.0 technology allows hypermodel NFTs to evolve over time based on social media activity, fan engagement, and more. Uh, this engagement will be, you know, converted into rewards, both real and virtual, thus, you know, creating value for the digital avatar or NFT. Fans will also be able to own and trade Hyperdream tokens built on Carbon Negative Hedera token uh, service. This is actually going to be pretty large. Like I said, pay attention to some of these companies. Let me actually open up uh, this link up in a new tab. I actually didn't have it open, but uh, this kind of breaks down everything around this. Like I said, 
Hedera is becoming a metaverse giant. I would say that they're most likely going to be powering the metaverse or at least a major, you know, metaverse uh, ecosystem. And uh, I think that this ecosystem is going to be pretty large compared to most. And we're actually going to be addressing this in this video as well. Um, but we do see Hyperdream will operate on the Hedera network, the world's fastest, most secure, and sustainable distributed ledger uh, designed for new and evolving digital ecosystems. With Hyperdream, artists, musicians, celebrities, and brands could use their digital assets, including Hyperreal's digital human doubles, known as Hypermodels, to connect with fans in the metaverse. And they do break that down here. Um, and they also do break down what we just basically talked about. But we also do see the Hypermodel as a hyperrealistic digital human that can be any age, speak any language, and perform in any current or future digital media and environment, including film, TV, video games, immersive interactive experiences, e-commerce, and install, uh, installation. Sorry. Hyperdream is another way in which our hypermodels can unlock new opportunities for talent and brands. This grant, you know, from the HR Foundation will accelerate the evolution of fan engagement. They do talk about the NFT 2.0 technology enables the properties of any NFT or living asset to evolve and change based on how the NFT is used, making it easier to generate and distribute millions of NFTs to end users while ensuring their market value is determined by their utility opposed to speculation. We are honored to receive the support of the Hedera ecosystem and to be partnering with the Hyper real as they continue pushing the boundaries of digital human technology. The opportunities for brands to engage with fans in the metaverse are limitless and our mission with Hyperdream is to assure the experience is sustainable and valuable for everyone. I mean like I just look at this and I just cannot help but be extremely bullish and by the way uh, we do see down here they're going to release an initial version of the Hyperdream platform in late 2022 with a full release in 2023. Guys the next like you know few months into 2023 is going to be something special to watch for hydera has been making massive partnership announcements i mean if like i wish that there was an uh, a way to click like the partnership announcements area uh just to kind of see some of the names but even if you go check out like the ecosystem within the hbr foundation's uh website there is so many names here you guys can just look at them and you could actually look at like specific funds like here's the metaverse fund Look at all of the metaverse announcements and partnerships that they already have here. Pretty significant. And you go check out like the crypto economy fund. Uh, there's a ton of names here as well. You do see even like payments and fintech, sustainable impact. Fund. Like there's so much happening on Hedera right now. Uh, announcement after announcement. And this is not, you know, an announcement to take, you know, lightly. Look at all of the, you know, hyper real, you know, production, you know, partners, Verizon, Sony, uh, Mayflower Entertainment, uh, Media Monks, G uh, Genius Ventures, sorry. And there's even a few other ones here, like Steve Madden. Um, you do see like PepsiCo. Like these are giants of names, especially around like what we are focusing on. And these are just like just a few uh, to really kind of look forward to around like the metaverse as we have been seeing like major uh, metaverse announcements from Hedera. I'm very excited for this. I'm very excited for, you know, the future of this space, specifically around like the metaverse within Hedera. I think that there are going to be really you know, building out something special. And you do see like all of the major names back here that they did collaborate on, like even Spider-Man 2, Ready Player One, Beowulf, uh, you know, uh, the amazing Spider-Man as well, Transformers, Star Trek. Like this is a company that is beyond the spectrum of what we are really kind of used to seeing within crypto. This is something special. And uh, talking about the metaverse, talking about Web3, we actually do see over here UK banking giant Barclays has reportedly, you know, bought into the crypto custody firm Copper's latest raise. Um, again, another major bank jumping in. And uh, this was not only one of the major banks jumping into crypto, but we also did see over here uh, from, you know, Japanese banking giant SMBC, $2.1 trillion in assets to develop an NFT and Web3 project or project, sorry. Uh, like I said, NFTs, Web3, the metaverse. These are three areas to continue to watch for. Of course, yes, we talk about like sustainability. We talk about green energy, things like that. And that's still something to really kind of watch for. But this is what I'm really kind of paying attention to right now um, around the scene because I'm telling you, Web3 and the metaverse are two areas, not only like NFTs as well. Like NFTs, yeah, sure. You can pretty much throw that into the area, but like web three itself is going to be so big. Like we are watching everything kind of be formulated, be built, put together. At the end of the day, I am so excited for the end goals here. And going back to my initial tweet, do I think that Hedera is the next generation, you know, of crypto technology? 100%.
I honestly cannot see a world where like Hedera is not powering like the future of the metaverse. Like they are, you know, building out these massive partnerships with major brands. Like these are brands that are behind, you know, movies, behind projects, behind like the major names that we all know about. And they're building out this in secret. Remember, all of the NDAs that Hedera probably has under their belts are probably just as uh, just as substantial, if not even more substantial, than these announcements that we are seeing. Because again, like this is just focused on like the metaverse and the NFT sector. Just imagine what else is under you know the wraps. And uh, also, talking about the metaverse, talking about things happening around like the you know Web3 scene, I share with you guys Mana. Mana was a token that I actually was buying at like roughly the 15 cent zone. So it was like right around this range here uh, during January of 2021. Yes, I could have gotten to this a lot earlier if I wasn't like idiotic and didn't pay attention to like the metaverse and stuff like that. Like I was not paying attention to the metaverse and things like that around like this time. Um, I was more so kind of centered on like XRP, um, XLM and like a few other tokens. Since then I've diversified greatly, done a lot more research and started taking the scene a little bit more serious. Um, but yeah, I should have got into like mana a lot earlier, but it's okay because I'm fine with missing the boat on, you know, mana because I really want to talk to you guys about, you know, H bar specifically. So when we talk about mana, I, I think that mana was a great opening act for the metaverse. But since then, we've kind of looked down on like the graphic range around, you know, Decentraland. I think that the graphics are severely lackluster. But this thing did from the March of 2020 lows, a 51,000% move all the way to roughly like about $5 or almost $6, I should say. Now, I know that the tokenomics on, you know, Decentraland are not the same as, you know, HBAR, if you will. Like, here's Decentraland sitting at about roughly almost 2 billion uh, tokens out there. So, yeah, it's a little bit more substantial compared to, or less substantial than, uh, you know, Hedera in tokenomics comparisons. But I want to just kind of share with you guys that if we go over to, you know, um, HBAR USD, for an example, and uh, we go back to March of 2020, and uh, if we do repeat something like that for like, you know, for example, like the central land. So here's like the lowest point. It was like January of 2020. It wasn't even like the lowest point from like March. Um, but I just kind of share with you guys real quick. You know, if we go off of like the March of 2020 lows, sure. That's a, that's a fine starting point. But if we do something like a 50,000% move off of those lows, which I think is something, you know, substantial, um, we would be sitting at about a, a $9 H bar. Um, but if we go off of these lows down here, for an example, just to kind of be a little bit more conservative, this would be almost $5. I've always said 3 to $6 for H bar. I think that this is something that could happen. You know, obviously price action lately has not been like the best, for an example, you know, going off the high, off of these lows, going back as far as like January 2020, this thing only did about a 7,000% move. And I'm not like undermining 7,000%. I'm just like saying compared to other assets, this thing has severely underperformed. Um, I know that a lot of people blame tokenomics. They, they will blame like the tokenomics in general for like, you know, the stifled price action. Honestly, I would argue that it's not the uh, tokenomics. I would actually argue that not a lot of people have been paying attention to Hedera simply because of the boring fashion around it. I think that they, you know, only see like the centralized entities on the GC and they kind of just stay away. Um, but to me personally, like this thing has quite a a bit of room to grow. I mean, even if we go off of these lows um, and look at some of like the FIB outreaches, like the 1618 is one that I actually would argue that we could outreach to. That would be about a $7.73, uh, you know, H bar. But again, I feel confident going off of our recent FIB levels, uh, really kind of going off of the low that we recently breached back here, which isn't technically our actual low. It would be more something like this. Um, I know that the outreach here is only like about $2.53, but I would say like, you know, within the $3 to $6 range is still is still where I'm eyeing. If you want to be a little bit more conservative, yeah, it would be like around this like $2.50 zone, which again, still going off of these uh, percentages, this would be about 27,455%. Um, if we outreach, like I said, to this like $6 range, still about like a 70,000%. So Somewhere within that three to six dollar range, I'm still looking at. Um, but like I said, conservative. Look at like the two dollar and fifty cent zone. If Decentraland, aka Mana, did the run that it did with the graphics that they do have, and I'm not talking down on Mana, I still think that it's going to do great. Um, I'm just saying, 
I think that with what Hedera is doing, with what they are trying to build out with some of their major partnerships, like I think that this partnership with Hyperreal is going to be something special. You could take a look at like the Hyper models. You could take a look at like their hyperspace and stuff like that. I think that what they are building is something very unique. And again, we do see some of like their hyper models that are featured in like these are some of like the major, you know, uh, companies that they have been featured in. Uh, you do see like all of the major names like these are like Rolling Stone, Hollywood Reporter, Yahoo, you know, News, Financial Times, Billboard. Like these are huge names. Um, I honestly think that with the the connections here, also here's like a few like little bit of an in depth view on some of like their mo their models. Very like this is substantial in terms of quality. This is substantial. So do I think that you know H bar could give like these other you know major metaverse tokens a run for their money? One hundred percent. And like I said, going off like some of these tokens all time highs, going off of like some of their you know market caps then we're looking at a pretty substantial, you know, target point for H bar going forward. And like I said, pay attention to 2023. I think that that's where like everything changes. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free discord down in the description below. If you guys don't want free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free discord down in the description below or wow. I just like repeated myself. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a beautiful day or beautiful night. If you guys are in this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out guys.